Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip from practiceinterviews.com, and in today's video, we're going to cover the difficult coworker interview question. And we're going to have a little bit of fun in this video today because we're going to cover it from both sides of the coin. So almost all the advice and feedback you see out there, it's all behavioral. But I also want to tackle it from the open-ended side because actually quite commonly, one of the most common open-ended questions asked at these companies is the difficult coworker question and your approach to dealing with it. They don't always want an example. We'll tackle both and we'll cover sample examples for both as well. So stick with me. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Let's start on the behavioral side. So we're gonna focus on one type of specific question. It's just, tell me about a time you had to deal with a difficult coworker. So let's dive in. Item one is the background. So we have this conflict with Bob and we tell our interviewer all the information about Bob, why Bob is such a bad coworker, and it just ends up being too much story and too much context. And our interviewer doesn't need to know all the details. And remember, this question starts off with a bit of a negative tone. Of course, it's a difficult situation with a coworker. So what we really wanna do is flip it and make it positive as quickly as possible. Item two is empathy. We talk about this item a lot, and in any of these types of conflict questions, an empathetic lens is gonna be critical for your success and how you go in to these conversations with this lens. And so we don't know everything that's happening in Bob's world, and we have to have this idea, this concept of positive intent. If we go in with empathy and positive intent, you'll have great success in your answers. Item three is depth. So this is where go on YouTube, Google these types of questions, and all the feedback has one to two sentences on how you were able to overcome or work through this difficult challenge with Bob. And in reality, it's just not creating your interviewer with a great visual for how you work with others and deal with these difficult types of situations. And so in one to two sentences, that's not real life. Maybe Bob isn't that open with you. Maybe Bob doesn't really care for you. And so I need to know a good level of detail or specificity for how you work it out with Bob. And oftentimes this does not happen in one meeting. Sometimes you'll never have a great relationship with Bob. And so in these real situations, we wanna bring a little bit of honesty. We still wanna have that positive focus, but the fact that every situation that's difficult with a coworker works itself out in two sentences and it's all fluffy and perfect, it's just not the case. So we don't wanna be talking about it in that way. We wanna keep it real. Item four is results and learnings. Okay, so you gotta start off with where you're at with Bob today. And it doesn't have to be cake or walks on the beach or whatever it might be. Meaning in the real world, a lot of times you're not gonna be besties with Bob, but maybe you've fostered some really significant, some strong items to move the relationship forward. Just know that we don't always have to get it perfect with Bob, but we have to do some things right and that's what we wanna highlight. And then obviously we always wanna bring in those key learnings and how we've taken those key learnings into other relationships, other difficult situations. Okay, let's dive into the sample example. So let's cue it up for our interviewer. Our interviewer is always gonna be Sue. Tell me about a time you had to deal with a difficult coworker. Okay, Sue, this is an example from my time as a technical recruiter hiring program managers at Google. And we were working on a global initiative for candidate experience, specifically candidates in any stage of the interview process, creating a really good experience for them. Six months into this project, Bob, who was working on the training team, the training side of things, started showing up late for meetings, started missing meetings, and oftentimes in meetings, he was irritable, even combative. And in order for the initiative to really move forward, we needed Bob's training skills, we needed Bob to be involved and be a partner in the process. So the first action I took as a lead on this project was after a particularly bad meeting, I forced Bob to basically go to lunch with me and I started that conversation off with some really open-ended questions focused on his personal side and then I flipped it over to the business side and what I uncovered was that 
Bob was getting really worn down by some of the process that training had to go through to get these trainings approved and get them up and running. And then he was actively interviewing with other teams at Google. So what I asked of him at the end of launch was, hey, if we can just set a meeting for later in the week and just go through a few items that will help maybe us uncover some items that are gonna help us have success. And so before that meeting, I came up with an action plan. I had a list of specifically the roadblocks, all the challenge areas we had, and then a few areas where I thought we could actually condense or chop down the training. I sent those notes to Bob about a day before the meeting, and then in the meeting, we literally went through it. I jumped right up to the whiteboard. I said, hey, take notes in a Google Doc. We worked through a bunch of items and came up with an action plan specifically focusing in on three areas where we felt like we could really speed up the training by maybe two to three months in terms of the overall project timeline. And then the last thing we did is he actually had to take this back to his team, get some approvals. And then in our next team meeting on the project, we met with everybody, we discussed some of the options, and then we had to kind of work through some items and make sure it was all clear and clean and, and come to an agreement and a shared vision. And the results were, because of this partnership with Bob, the project actually did end up being completed two months earlier. Bob didn't complete this project. Bob moved off the team, but one of the keys was when Bob transitioned out of his role, the person who came in, Jane, he really helped Jane get on board. And he even told me, he said, look, I'm not helping other projects as much, but since you worked with me, I was happy to give you a little bit extra help. So I really appreciate the relationship. And so Bob and I really actually did have a good relationship at the end. And what I learned was I probably should have been a little bit more proactive because being proactive can be incredibly beneficial when you get into these difficult situations. And I always take that step now. I don't let multiple meetings happen, multiple iterations happen before taking that action. Okay, let's flip to the open-ended side. And so specifically on the open-ended side, we're gonna deal with the more open-ended question, how do you deal with difficult coworkers? So we're gonna go pretty high level here. I just wanna cover the three categories and then we'll dive right into the sample example. So item six, the CFS method. So when clarifying, there's a few items we wanna do. We wanna establish the relationship. We wanna establish how long the relationship has been a little bit bumpy. And maybe we wanna establish like if this is just an overall challenge or if it's pertaining to a specific initiative or project. The framework should be soft skills focused. Remember, these questions are really focused on your interpersonal skills. So you're gonna to wanna to focus on those items in the framework. And then lastly, with the solution, basically these solutions for these types of scenarios, especially when it's this vague and open-ended, just making a couple of assumptions is really gonna help you have success and make it specific to the role you're interviewing for, whether it's a PM or sales or Eng that will help you get a little bit more focused in the solution. Let's cue it up again with our question from our interviewer, Sue. How do you deal with difficult coworkers? Sue, I would wanna understand a little bit more about my relationship with this person. Are they on my direct team? Are they on a cross-functional team? Um, then I'd also be curious about the leveling piece. So. Is this somebody who's a peer of mine, maybe a level below? Are they somebody who's a coworker who's in a leadership role? Can you answer those questions for me? Okay, Sue, so I'd also wanna uncover a couple of other items. I would wanna uncover if this is an ongoing challenge or if this is specifically being driven by a current project or initiative. And then I would also wanna understand the scope of the challenge with this person. So. Is the scope just with me or is this challenge with multiple other people as well? Sue, can you clarify any of those items for me? Okay, Sue, whenever there's an opportunity to build or foster a stronger relationship, here are some items I would focus in on. Always start with that empathetic lens. So empathy is critical. I'm going to listen, question, ask how they're currently resourced. That's really critical. I wanna look at some problem solving items and then come up with a plan. I always wanna start with empathy because I think, Sue, that this is the one that kinda of casts the widest net, but is there any area that you'd like to focus in on? Okay, Sue, let's go with a couple of assumptions. So I'm interviewing for this technical recruiter role, so 
let's imagine the challenge is with a collaborative partner, let's say a sourcer for instance, and the efforts just aren't going well. Uh, we're having communication challenges, we're getting completion challenges, actually getting the work done, all sorts of those types of challenges. My starting point is empathy. So I'm gonna meet with this person one-on-one -on -one, and I'm gonna start by listening and questioning, both from a personal and work perspective. So typically I'm gonna start with some simplistic personal questions and hopefully have a little bit of historical data so I know a couple of areas to ask questions. Then I'm gonna flip it to more work questions, understand what they have going on at work, what are all their priorities, how are they currently resourced, and then in any difficult conversation with a coworker, I really want to start to get their permission to talk about some challenge areas. So I'm not gonna just dive in and start poking. And then another way that I really dive in is I say and use words such as, it seems like. So I've asked for their permission, I say it seems like, it softens the blow a little bit, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna talk about some of those items then we're gonna flip over and we're gonna to start to work on that action plan. And action plans are typically focused on really having empathy for what they have on their plate and focusing in on some small wins. What I'd like to do is I'd like to pause here. I wanna know if we should maybe talk a little bit more about the action plan and kind of dive into the weeds of what that looks like, or should we go back to some of those beginning items like how they're resourced is a really important item as well. Okay, and then what we would do is hopefully we'd keep drilling down into the solution and have multiple iterations. Ultimately, to sum up, on both sides of the coin, you're gonna have to give some depth on how you work with others. These visuals are really gonna help your interviewer envision you in the role and see your strong interpersonal skills. And I hope that these couple of sample examples help today. Good luck.